This is the day I spent with Mike Fitch, founder of Animal Flow. Let's go. We always begin with wrist mobilization. So we always start off with the wrist because you know most people are not used to spending time on their hands. So we're gonna start off with something really simple that we call magnetic wrists. So the idea is if we had a magnetic bracelet on each one of our wrists, and those two bracelets do not want to lose contact with each other. So we'll start off with palm side together. What's up? Oh no. Oh, <laughs> I thought yeah. you were just like no, yeah. I was waiting to go down on the ground. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, You're like, no, I, I choose not to do that. So Palm we'll side, go palms side together. We'll go thumbs across. We'll reach out, splay the hands out so we can go thumb side of the wrist together. There you go. So we get that little lateral motion. Then we sweep the fingers down, compress the hands, and then we splay again to find pinky side. Yeah, cool. And then just continue. So palm side, thumbs across, sweep the fingers down find pinky side and then we can just reverse from there so we'll go pinky side sweep the fingers down reach out to find the thumbs continue the rotation in the palms man it feels so good having the feedback of your wrists against your wrists it really does it's like, almost like a little mouthwash release yeah and, the wrist. and then just switch whenever you feel like it's time wow that's deceptively fantastic and then from here, we can, of course, take it to the ground and do some really simple wrist rocks. And the thing that I like about wrist rocks is that we can start to get a little bit more motion in our feet as well. And I don't know how your toes are, probably pretty good, but you know, it's so rare for people to have good toe extension, especially great toe extension. I noticed in the book you had some toe sitting, which I'm a huge yeah. fan of. So in these rocks, we can tuck the toes underneath we plant the hands to where the fingers are pointing behind us, the elbows stay straight, and then we can just rock back, seeing if we can also get a little bit of motion in the feet as well. And then from here, rock forward. Great to link up a breath to this. And then we can take it for a couple circles. So we can go clockwise, left thumb, Shoulders in front of wrists, right thumb, fingertips and toes. And then you can alternate, continue in one direction, whatever feels good. Cracks in the top of my spine as well, which is great. Yeah, nice little adjustments. It seems like the breath is a relevant tool the whole time as you're going through this. It's not just an anatomical thing, it's like using your breath as a tool to open up the spaces or contract the spaces? To open up the spaces, contract the spaces, and just explore motion, right? Like exploring yeah. our body and linking our breath to different motion is so important, you know? Yeah. And you can unlock so much more uh, whenever you find a breath that is rhythmic to the space that you're looking for, you yeah. know? So now that we have a little bit of a wrist mobilization warm up, we're gonna go to something we call activations. And just so you know, we, say that the animal flow system is built on the ABCs. And so A stands for ape, which is our deep squat. B is beast, which is like our quadrupedal crawl position. And then crab is the complement to beast. So we're gonna put you in our beast and I'm going to activate your system, which is basically just means that we're trying to drive information to your CNS. And then we're gonna go from there to decreasing points of contact to try to increase the challenge. So go ahead and place the hands shoulder width. Glance underneath your body, make sure that your knees and feet are hip width. We're gonna pull your knees just in front of your hip line. So think of like straight line from the belly button down to the floor. And in this position, before we get into beast, we're just gonna go tops of the feet on the ground. So we're gonna, we're gonna look at these different regions and just see if you can even connect to them as we try to find a sense of what might be neutral. So if we pretend that your head got really heavy and your nose came down towards the floor, yeah, good, like that. And then let's see the opposite action of that. So as if there were a string pulling the back of your head up towards the sky and you gave yourself a little bit of a double chin, but neck still long. Good, and let's do that again. So nose towards floor, yep. Try not to incorporate the rest of the back and then retract the head, big double chin, and then try to find middle. Once you find what you consider to be neutral between those two endpoints, just set that position. 
So then we move our way down and we start to look at how the scaps organize themselves on the rib cage. So we're gonna have you try to think about not using the spine, but instead allowing the shoulder blades to slide on the ribs. So first, push the shoulder blades apart by driving into the ground. And again, try to keep the spine out of it. We're just trying to get the shoulder blades apart. Yes, good. Now, as if you were squeezing my fingers together, Yes, perfect, even more. Drop the chest down towards the floor. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Let's do that again. Push the ground away, protracting. Good, allowing the scaps to slide on the thorax and then squeeze them together. Yeah, there it is, much better. And then again, one more time. Drive, drive, drive. And then squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And then find what you consider to be neutral. And then once you do that, just create a little muscular tension around to support that neutral position. So let's take a look at the shoulder. Very similar concept. We're gonna first internally rotate the shoulder, then externally rotate. We can just think pit of elbow in, pit of elbow out. We're doing that with both shoulders. And then once we find elbow out again, lock it in. So that's gonna be our stability. So think about connecting that to this. So nothing else from the mid back up is moving. That's all locked in. Let's see how the lumbo pelvic hip or this lower region is working. So go ahead and just arch only the low back. So just think about tailbone to sky. Good, perfect. Keep this out of it, you're doing great. Now think about rounding just the low back. Beautiful. That's really nice. Give me two more of those. What so. a cool sensation segmenting. Yes. Uh, lumbar and cervical really really nice and then the shoulder girdle as well like really isolating those pieces uh -huh. you can tell I have some stickiness in my left shoulder girdle you got a little stickiness there yeah. and then find what you consider to be neutral and then from here go ahead and tuck your toes underneath we'll get just a little vacuum so just draw in try not to cha change the spinal position and then lift the knees one inch from the floor good so this is what we call our beast position and so once in beast, this is an opportunity for us to really think about you connecting not only to your body, but your body connecting to itself. So from here, if we wanna make this slightly more challenging, we can start asking you to lift limbs. So from this position, I could say, okay, Aaron, lift your right foot just high enough to slide a piece of paper. So we're thinking shortest distance from the ground possible. So now we start to introduce some rotational load into the body, right? Yeah. So then we can drop the right foot, try the same thing with the left foot, great. And then we can do the exact same thing with the hand. So we can think about lifting from the shoulder blade, don't bend the elbow, see if you can lift the hand just high enough to slide a piece of paper with minimal shift and deviation from the original position. Very cool. And then drop down, let's see the same thing with the left hand. Good. Keep the elbow straight, think about lifting from here and then drop that left hand. So now let's go opposite hand and foot. So let's try right hand left foot good don't forget to breathe and then switch it's deceptively difficult yes elbow stays straight palm stays close to the floor yeah yes and then come back down set and relax so we could do <gasps> <laughs> deceptively <Terrible>. yeah <laughs> yeah so and you know something so simple like that it doesn't require anything right it's just your body it's just a little bit of floor space but depending upon how you want to use that you know whatever you decide to do after that so if you want to go lift if you want to go you know throw some kettlebells around like whatever you want to do we're basically one inviting your conscious awareness back into your system and two we're encouraging your body to speak to itself so we're just priming everything for whatever else comes next yeah that's i really love all of that because you're segmentalizing if that's even a word neck shoulder girdle thoracic spine lumbar spine mm -hmm. and so within that the tendency is if we go through some global dynamic movement we'll end up just continuing to go through compensatory patterns because we'll use the whole system. Yeah. So being able to draw back and kind of like look under the hood of yourself and say, what's going on with that left shoulder girdle, that cervical spine or any of that. It's a really, really beautiful approach. It yeah. It's like a, a gorgeous way to, to, like you said, like set up your central nervous system for mm -hmm. any activity that you're doing. And just as the person who's observing the person going through that, 
you can see if they can even access it. You know, some people just have complete blind spots for areas of their body. Like they, they hear what you're saying, but they're like, I don't even know how to find that. Yeah. So finding and establishing or un unveiling blind spots is a big part of that as well. So we can quickly go through the complementary position to that, which is crab. Cool. And so let's go ahead and set up, just have a seat on the ground. And we'll look at our knees and feet. Again, they're gonna be hip width. Our hands are going to be shoulder width or slightly wider. Go ahead and pl plant the hands where the fingers are behind you. Start to sneak your heels up towards your butt just a little bit more. Cool, that might be too far. You've got some long legs. So then from here, let's scoot hips to heels, hips to hands, and then find the midpoint between the two. Now let's pull the shoulder blades back to find each other. Let's drive them down towards the hips, lifting the hips now one inch from the floor. Cool. So now, if you're looking directly ahead at the horizon, yep. I'm gonna ask you to retract your head again, making that little double chin. Now, think about as if the sun had just broken over the horizon, so your head's already in the perfect place. So it's kind of like you're in almost like a, a neutral spine position, but you're reclined. Yep. Yeah, so now we're loading all this stuff back here. We're loading the tissues on the back side of the body much more so than the previous position or the beast. Yep. But we can go through the same stuff. So let's start with the foot. Lift the left foot just high enough to slide a piece of paper. Right. Yeah, and then really anchor in through this glute. Hold that position, maintain the corkscrew, keep all of this active. Yep. And then drop the left foot, lift the right foot. And that, this motion in particular is really directly activating that whole you can call it the posterior oblique sling. Yeah. Don't be fancy. Yeah. We're connecting the glute up to the posterior side of the shoulder girdle. Yeah. Across through the, through the. That the lumbar. that nice X on the back really exactly. Good. And then if we want to make that even more pronounced, we do the opposing lift. So you know, opposite foot, opposite hand. So now we can load. Yeah. So then the foot that's in contact with the ground, the hand that's in contact with the ground. Now we're seeing that real oblique posterior oblique connection. Yeah, so like a, like a spiral pattern straight from my hip across. All the way across. Through my, my uh, thoracic spine up in my shoulder, it's really nice. Yeah, and it's just simple, do the other side just to complete that connection. And the great thing is we can, you know, you can find out for yourself, oh, is there better stability on one sling versus the other sling? Yeah. Do I feel more connected? Yeah, my right side's way easier. Yeah. My left, I've had shoulder a lot of trauma uh -huh. in my left shoulder, a lot of the dislocations and injuries there. Yeah. So it's still a process of putting the pieces back together there. Cool. Cool. So from there, if those are our two main activations, yeah. uh, we do have a section of animal flow or a component we call our form specific stretches. And I'm just gonna teach you two of them. One is a crab reach. You already know the base for crab. We're just gonna modify it slightly. Okay. And the other one is something we call a scorpion reach. Okay. So these movements, would look similar to other movements that you may see, let's say in yoga, but we're gonna give you, instead of thinking about relaxing into these positions, we're really going to give you some strategic points of tension to think about. So we're really relying on our own tissue to pull us deeper into ranges. So let's go ahead and set up in that crab position again, but this time we're gonna go shoulder width with the feet versus hip width. And if our hips are about an inch above the ground, we're looking towards the rising sun, I'm gonna bring my left hand up, and now I'm looking through the hand towards the rising sun. As I bridge the hips up, I'm going to allow the base shoulder to rotate outwardly and see if I can get up into a really clean, what we call three-point bridge. Beautiful. Now, go ahead and turn your head to where your eyes are looking down towards the base hand. Continue to reach up and over with this arm, but instead of reaching that way, let's bend the elbow. Think about the upper fingers reaching towards the lower fingers. We're also gonna think about rotating, trying to stack the upper shoulder on top of the lower shoulder, and we're wringing out all that rotation through the spine. We're still keeping the hips bridged. Beautiful, still breathing. Reach for my fingers, reach for my fingers. That looks awesome. And then return to crab. Let's do that same thing on the opposite side. Cool. Man, that feels like such a beautiful mobilization for the, for the thoracic spine. Like you really, it's like you're like, the leverage that you get from that position is really, really special. And it's so unique to get that extension, rotation, and lateral flexion. You know, there's, there are so many cool things going on there with the spine. The key is getting the freedom from the hips. So if you can't get the hips all the way up, we don't go for the actual reach. But since you can get clearance from the hips, that unlocks the spine for us. Good, and then just rotate more here. Keep that hip up, 
Keep the hand or arm framing the head. Now reach again. Yes. So I'm actively reaching down through this arm. I'm actively reaching through Opening all that. Head. I'm grinding my feet down on the ground. I'm aware of maintaining neutrality through my spine. So I'm not just like borrowing from one position to they're stealing from one place yeah. to give to another place. Exactly. It's really, really cool. I mean, I'm sure I'm not doing it perfectly, but I like the way it feels. You're doing, your, your crab reach looks great, brother. And then return to crab. Cool. So if we're thinking about that motion as the hips are stability, yeah. as we move up the body towards the fingertips, that's opportunity for mobility. So if this next movement, or for this next movement, we're gonna look at it as almost like the opposite. So our shoulder girdle, or our shoulders will be our base of stability, and then as we go up towards the hips, that's where we're getting more motion. So we can start this off in the same way, and I'm just gonna demonstrate with my back to you so you can see this. So if I start off in that crab position, you already know, I'm gonna take one of my legs through the window, and, <laughs> exactly up to this what we call our peak position now from here we're gonna think about shoulders coming up towards ears I'm gonna think about pulling this shin up towards the sky now here's the key if I'm looking back at the base leg what I want to see is the heel is high off the ground not planted I want to see that there's a little bit of outward rotation from the heel and the knee is slightly flexed in doing so, see, think about it this way. If I drop my brake, we call the heel our brake, if I drop it to the ground, it's limiting how much range or motion I can explore up here. But if I lift and allow some rotation with my stability in my shoulder, now I can explore a lot of stuff up here. So I'm just gonna walk you through this. Let's set up in that crab position. And lift your right foot, left hand. Yep. Now lift your left heel off the ground. We call that pushing on the gas. Right leg comes through the window we've created. Plant the hand shoulder width and start to bring that reaching leg up. Cool. Now I'm just going to position you a little bit here. So let's bend the knee. Think about this scorpion tail. Let's get the heel high off of the ground. Slacken or, or flex the knee just a little bit. Make it soft. Rotate this out as you open the upper hip even more. Yes. Shoulders shrug towards ears, eyes come back to the base foot. That's it, buddy. Now, I want you to create so much tension with this leg that if I were to do a pull up on your leg, I could. So resist me pulling down. Mm, yeah, cool. cool. And then I'm gonna go away, awesome. Yes, this looks great. Heel up even higher. Perfect, shoulders shrug towards ears, that's your base. Awesome. Now try to get that toe even further away from this hip. Yes. And then lead with the knee to come back around and through the window. Find crab again, lifting that left hand off the ground. Drop, drop. Let's go into a right arm crab reach. So keep that foot on the ground. We'll just go up to this again. We're going to go through that sequence. Boom. And then let's come down, plant. Let's take the left leg underneath the body up to that scorpion reach. Look through the body at the heel. Make sure it's high off the ground. Make sure the knee is soft and it's outwardly rotated. Open the hip. Yeah, there it is. Good. Reach with these toes away, getting even more opening. Remember, if I were to pull down on your leg, you're going to resist. Yes. Shoulders towards ears, looking at toes, and then take that back through the window. Plant, let's go for a left arm crab reach, because these two movements really enjoy each other. Keep those heels on the ground, and return. Well, cool, how often would a person do movements like this? Is it like a daily thing? Is this like a wake up thing before yeah. bed thing? Uh, yes, yes, and yes. So wherever they can fit it in, but cool. the activations, great first thing in the morning, you know, great. ground the system, like wake everything up. Cool. Uh, those form specific stretches like the crab reach and scorpion reach, those are great little breaks, you know, so if you want to do them as part of a warm up, as part of your cool down, just when you've been sitting at your desk for a little while, like that's perfect. How long should this practice take? 
uh, if you're using the, just those two movements, you could, uh, you know, you could uh, circuit them, so you could just continue to, to perform them back to back for however much time you had. I like to think about doing them multiple times a day. Sweet. Yeah. All right. I appreciate that. Yeah, brother. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, press the subscribe button below so you can catch these videos each week. If you have any questions for me or Mike Fitch, drop us a comment below. I also recorded a phenomenal podcast with Mike that we recorded right after this workout. So check that out. Appreciate y'all. That's it. That's all. Peace out.